So what's actually going on in the San Diego real estate market? That's what we're going to cover right now. Hop into some charts, tell you the stories behind the charts, not just show you the numbers and stuff, let you know actually what we're seeing boots on the ground right here in San Diego. So you are up to date on everything that's going on in the San Diego real estate market. So let's get into it. And as always, thanks for tuning in. Love making these videos for you, but we're also real estate agents right here in San Diego. So if you guys need some help, I'm Chris Erickson. We got Mr. Lauren Sanders right there. We're with the Beach Life Group right here. And if you guys have questions, you want to start that conversation, feel free to book your discovery call down below. Let's jump into some charts, show you what's going on. Typically in real estate, we have seasons. You have kind of the busy season, that spring market. It's a little, you know, people get settled in for the summer, maybe picks up a little again towards the back end. We haven't seen total amount of seasonality, which we'll get into in a little bit, but we have seen kind of that seasonality in the median sales price, which you're looking at right now. This is all of San Diego County. So compare it to this top line here is 2022. So last year and this year is 2023. So you can see we're a little bit below, about 2% below the median sales price, what we were last year. And it's just a metric to kind of track the trend of the market, the median sales price, although it does provide some data, there's so many different neighborhoods and different areas and the median price point for different neighborhoods, coastal, inland is going to be kind of different stories and different prices for all those little cities and such. So just take yeah. this all, but but a lot of the trends are about the same. So 2% down from last year. Well, I think what's interesting, the most interesting thing I've seen so far this year is we started uh, we peaked out last year at about a million bucks. If you look at detached homes in San Diego, I'm just, but, and then we got back down to 849 towards the beginning of this year. And then this chart you have is showing all uh, both property types combined, but look yeah. at that. looks very, the, the upward trend looks very similar to last year. So it'll be interesting to see if we do this little bump along at a lower level given we're at lower level in pricing at a peak, but are we going to bump along there and head back down or are we going to continue sideways or upwards? And it's all going to come down to inventory in the end, which is driven by two things. Mortgage rates is one of the things that drives how much inventory stays on the market and then how quickly things are, are being replaced as they're listed. So at this point, we're gaining a little bit of inventory where you guys were, where I saw you this weekend out at that open house in San Marcos, there's less than a month's supply of detached homes for sale in San Alejo Hills. So yeah. I think there was like seven active listings in that whole neighborhood at that time. And I've seen a couple of those pending already. Yeah. Yeah. You can see we just crossed over. So inventory, month supply, that's just realtor talk. It's a good indicator of kind of, are we in like a buyer's market? Are we in a seller's market? If there's nothing else that came on the market, how long? would it take for all the current buyers to gobble up all the demand, all the current homes on the market? So right now, this number, this is actually a week supply. So a, if it's if it, if it was a six months, that'd be awesome. It'd be, uh, they consider that a neutral market, but it's actually six weeks. So within six weeks, everything would be gone. We were trending up last year. And this story was, a lot of it was due when the market, because the market froze. So we did build a little bit of homes on the market which made homes sit a little bit, but interest rates played a heavy role in that. But interest rates are right about that same spot where we were last year. So we made a previous video, what happens to the San Diego real estate market at 7% interest rates. If you want to go see what that happens, because we do have a good indicator. It really comes down to the duration of that. How long does it stay like that? But six weeks as a whole, a month and a half, that is pretty darn short. There was also one other number on the pricing that kind of gives you a good indication of demand. So yep. how competitive is out there, the average sale price to the list price. So basically meaning if it was listed at a million, is it going for a million 50 or is it going for 900,000 and 50? So what's the spread on that? And we did once again, once the uh, kind of towards the back end of last year, when we did see a lot less demand out there, it did start dropping down. I mean, San Diego as a whole, it doesn't fluctuate too far under list price. Last year, it did drop down towards the end of last year to about 98% of list price, where at the peak, we were sitting at a hundred and almost 106% of list price. In some, some cities, in some kind of places where there's a little more competition, that was even higher. So, but right now we are just crossed over the 100 mark, about uh, 
month, two months ago now, and we're sitting about 101%, meaning a million dollar house is going for about 1 million and 14,000. So competition wise, you can see as this trends up, the competition is getting a little more aggressive. But new listings this year, we're sitting at 542. And last year, we we're sitting almost about 900. So you can see, even if you compare it to previous years, like pre-pandemic years, this number was a lot higher than that. So we're just comparing it to last year, which was an interesting year to say the least, since we have about the same amount of pendings. Basically, that's just saying everything that's coming on, there's another house going off the market. So we're not gaining any inventory. There's two couple things to think about when you look at these year over year numbers too. We were like in this unicorn market that has never happened before last year because we we actually got down to uh, if you take yourself back to the beginning of last year, not this year. We had like a half a month uh, under a month supply in a bunch of areas, but as San Diego is a whole like 0.6 month supply of inventory of homes for sale. January 2022. So when you look at this year in the numbers, and until we get through the end of this year, these comparisons where we look back at these crazy numbers that unlikely that we'll see, again, that were based on very low interest rates, and a very fast market at that time, you know, prices, in comparison to where they were now, maybe uh, pretty close in some areas where the market's pretty flat, but the interest rates now 7%. So that's a big difference. The interest rates are kind of like the reins on the market. Like when last year rates started creeping up, well, they went, for, they doubled last year. So we didn't see that. Now we're kind of settled in a little bit more to, you know, that six to 7% range. But once they do hit over that 7% mark, a lot of buyers do pull back the reins. And so that's where we're sitting right now. Now everything is still getting sold, but with less offers as a whole and Maybe that, like we mentioned, the kind of above list price is not as aggressive as it was last year. So those 7% rates are kind of holding back some parts of the market. Usually like during this time in a normal market where we see that spring market, you see more homes come on, you see a summer market, you see more homes come on. I think we've missed kind of that summer, that spring slash summer, early summer market where we do see the number of homes rise and we might be over the hump. So is maybe yep. the 7% interest rates are also holding back sellers from, you know, selling and buying again. But I think that that's, that's the story right now. For sure. There's this, there's a bunch of inputs that are shuffling around and mm -hmm. any, any person that's thought about selling their house that they, you know, they're too tight and they need a bigger house, but they have a 3% mortgage and now mortgages are 7%. They're like, hey, maybe we can last another year. If you want to or need to, if it's leaning on need where you have some timing things that at some point you're going to need to sell, I would start that process early with somebody, somebody like us or somebody you trust mm -hmm. and talk through what actually makes sense for you because the market is dynamic and maybe there's pieces of the puzzle we could help put together that would make it make sense You know, to move to fit your needs. And it might be in a different time than you think, because one example is, hey, I, you know, we hear this a lot. Have you probably heard this? I don't know how many times this past year. I'm going to wait till interest rates come down. Here's what I would say that is going to be scary if rates actually come down to five percent, and we don't really have any inventory now. I don't know what's going to happen. Then. <laughs> you, you know what I mean? Because it's yeah. could, it could it could be we could see another one of those crazy surges like we saw. You know, where you get this 18 or 20% surge because there's yeah. just no inventory. There's a bunch of things going on, very complicated time to make a decision. So that's why I say give your give yourself time. Like if yeah. it's a year away, start talking through what's going on and follow the market so you can understand it. Um, I mean, that's the way we do it anyway at Beach Life Group. We're not saying, hey, you need to do this and sell. It's more like, what are you trying to do? And then Here's what the market's doing. How does that fit with what you're trying to accomplish? And there's a lot of people that had challenges in a tight market where they just made decisions and didn't get the house they wanted because they were jumping and making kind of erratic decisions. Felt like there was pressure. So now more than ever, set yourself up to have a little, take off some of that pressure, talk through it with somebody you trust, and give yourself some time to figure out what the best next move is. Whenever that time comes, information is down below. So feel free to reach out. We got your back when making the move here in San Diego.